What's up, music people love the internets? This video is going to be a review of Mars Volta's new album, Nocturnicit. Now, those of you that are big fans of Mars Volta probably are not going to like this video. I'm going to be honest, this is the first Mars Volta album that I have ever listened to, and yeah, I gotta say they're very, very, very different. Nothing I'm used to ever, like, nothing I've ever heard before. But that's enough of that. I'm going to go ahead and do a track run through, let you know what I thought of each track. And here it is. Track one is called The Whip Hand. This song is really out there. The drums are really weird and offbeat, and it's, it's, it's as if the singer's not even singing. I mean, like, since they're offbeat, it sounds like he's not singing with the beat. Sounds very off. Uh, that's pretty much all to say about this one. Track two is called Aegis. Starts off pretty awesome. There's this creepy little guitar style thing going on in there. There's one part where the, I don't know what section of the song it is, I'll talk about the structure of these songs a little later, but it sounds like, well there's like a part where the song really picks up, totally changes tempo, I really like that, that sounded really good, I like that style that they, they did with that. Track 3 is Dyslexicon. This is another song where the drums sound real offbeat, the song is really messy as a whole, there's a lot of this woo kind of stuff going on, which I'm not used to hearing. This seems like one of those songs you can only really enjoy if you're like rolling on some X or something. Track 4 is called Empty Vessels Make the Loudest Sound. The previous song, Dyslexicon, kind of transitions into this song. The drums are really, really slow, but surprisingly, I think this is the first song where they're actually on beat. I mean, to me, the drums are kind of like the most important part of the song because if you can't really feel the beat, how are you supposed to jam to it? I mean, this whole album is just like totally off. The drums kind of sound like they're doing whatever they want through this whole album. Like they'll be on beat one second and then the next second they're just totally off and doing their own little thing banging everywhere. I, I don't understand it. This song is just under seven minutes long. I mean by the fourth track you're, you've been listening to the album for 20 minutes. That's insane. That's, that's kind of long. Track five is The Mocking Jewel. It's got like a little reggae feel to it. I was really liking it, but the damn drums are offbeat. Track four is La Pachka. More weirdness going on. At one point, I swear, they, the drum beat they were using was going backwards. Like they recorded it, flipped it in reverse, and threw it on the album. Yeah, that. Some weird little noises going on. More woo That pretty much sets the atmosphere of the whole album. Track seven is called In Absentia. More of the drums, they're like drum rolling whenever they want, whenever they feel like it. The vocals sound very, very far off in the distance. And there's one point where you keep saying like Desera or something like that. Uh, I, I think that was the most catchy, enjoyable part of the song. I like the way he said it and stuff. It was okay. Track 8 is Imago. It was more of the same old stuff. Nothing really stood out to me on this song. Yeah, there was really nothing I could talk about in this song. So I'm going to go ahead and read you the definition of Imago. <clears throat> An idealized concept of a loved one formed in childhood and retained unaltered in adult life. Like, okay, the band knows how to use words that normal people don't really need to use. Like, bravo. I mean, to me, there will never be a situation where I will be like, hey, I need to use that word. You know, I mean, that in my whole life, I swear I will never use that word or feel a need to use that word. Track nine is Moloch Walker. Shit battery's dying. It sounded like a fiddle was in there somewhere and it was playing in reverse. Timing is so weird in this song. I mean, you can't even predict how he's going to sing the next line in the song. I was trying to read along to the lyrics and I just couldn't. Track 10, Trinket's Pale of Moon. There's a lots of falsetto singing in this song. I noticed at the 4 minute and 17 second mark of this song, th when the guitarist was playing, he like messed up and hit a buzz note and it sounded terrible. That was, to me, the most exciting part of the song. Track 11, Veda My Lady. Man, it sounded like every other song on the album. Track 12, the album name, Nocturnicate. Do you think I'll fold? Like, that's the only thing I remember from this song. And I really didn't understand it. That's my stomach. And track 13 is Zed and Two Knots. Surprisingly, I really liked this song, but all I could think of is how the drums would go off measure, still on beat, and it would throw me off. Like, all I wish I could do is like, I wish I could play the drums on this song, like, here, give me the drumsticks, I'll play, let me re-record the drum track, like, god, I mean, it had so much potential. So anyway, that wraps up Nocturna Kit by the Mars Volta. Now this album, I feel like the songs weren't written around the lyrics, it's as if the band was over here writing the music on their own, and the singer was over here writing the lyrics on his own, and... They just went into the studio that way and the singer did his best to try to add the lyrics to the music that uh, he didn't write it specifically for. It's like he just tried his best to kind of make it fit. Another thing is the album's 
I think it's just way too long. The whole album's a little over an hour, which is good. That shows that the band put a lot of time, put a lot of effort, put a, a lot of content in there for its fans. But by track nine, I mean, I was already yawning. I noticed that mostly all the songs really didn't have a chorus, didn't really have a specific structure. It seems as if they were written as poems, which is good to read, but when it came to fitting them into the song, it just didn't work out too well. They came together very unstructured, very messy, but they did it in a way to where I feel like that's what they were going for. Like, I'll bet anything that this band does a lot of drugs. And I feel like if hippies were still around, that this is the kind of music they would be listening to. Yeah, this album is definitely not for me. Uh, a lot of people I think are probably gonna troll me saying, oh, you just don't know good music, but I mean, I don't think that's it. I think uh, a lot of music is good for some people and, and there's really no such thing as bad music. No matter how crappy a song is, no matter what, there's always gonna be someone out there that likes it. But to me, this album, I just feel like you really just gotta be drugged up out of your mind to actually sit there and really enjoy it. So anyways, that's pretty much all from me for tonight. Don't forget to press the subscribe button if you haven't yet. Leave a comment down below. If you really love the Mars Volta, please leave me a comment. Tell me what it is about this band that you like. What is it about the songs that really captures you and makes you really enjoy this band? Or leave me a comment down below on a future album you would like to see me review. Also, press thumbs up if you like this video. Thank you for watching my review of the Mars Volta Nocturnicate. And I uh, will see you guys next time.